For today's video, I'm going to be restoring this old rocking chair. I originally started removing the finish on this about 10 or 15 years ago and gave up because I didn't know what I was doing back then. So, full disclosure, it was really, really rookie mistake and then left it on the front porch and the weather got to it. So, you can see it's in really bad shape. The different temperatures and fluctuations in humidity, all that stuff made the glue give way. So it's just seen better days. So there are only two screws total in the entire project and both of them are just used to hold the arms on. And at first I was taking my time to make sure I didn't bust anything and then just took some light taps with a rubber mallet to get things separated. So for the most part it came apart really easily. There are four pieces that didn't come out of the top and then I did not try to take the base apart. I didn't want to jeopardize not being able to get anything back together on the bottom pieces or just make any other mistakes after all this other time of delaying. I didn't want to put it off any further. So here you can get a picture of all the pieces and up close view you can see the glue. I wiped off the spider webs, but glue that's sitting around and just age kind of dust, dirt, mildew, all kinds of things are on these. And then the ends are completely dried out. So the red part, that's actually, it transferred from the cushion that was on top of it. And it thankfully came out nicely, but I do need to find a new cushion. So the base, the other part is it's still, it was really sturdy, so no worries there. So the first step is I took some double-sided tape and cut up a sheet of sandpaper into three individual pieces and just adhered it to the work top, workbench, excuse me. So the good news with time lapse is you can't see me struggle with this tape for the longest time. It took me a while to get it apart. So take the three strips, put them on the table so that way you have a flat surface and then you don't create any kind of curves when you're trying to sand off straight edges. So once I had that mounted up, I just took each of the pieces of the seat and just sanded them to get off the glue and didn't realize I'd hit the camera at that point. But just to get rid of the glue and any kind of buildup that's in there, but that way the pieces would be able to bond more securely to each other once I put some glue on there. So you can see the sawdust basically hides that sandpaper pretty well, it blends in with the workbench. And after I got finished, I took some mineral spirits just to get rid of any remaining residue and oils. That way the glue would stick much better. So I took each piece, put on glue on each side of it. And the tricky parts of doing something like this is as you're squeezing it together, it, they will tend to slip. So I've seen some people put salt in there, others will put sawdust in there to keep it from moving too much. But I just put the clamps on and then lightly clamped them. Once I got it lined up, then I put some more pressure on it just to keep the pieces from moving. And when you see the glue squeeze out, that, that was a good sign for me, making sure I had enough inside. And those were just to hold it together. Here's where I'm probably messed up. If I'd really worked a little harder, I probably could have separated that piece, which you'll see later in the video. It separates on its own for me, unfortunately. So then got my orange clamps, which have a lot more pressure to them, and use that on the end and then one more in the middle. But the big key, whenever you glue these up, make sure you do not leave the glued up pieces on top of any other pieces of your project or any glue that falls through will potentially stick the two together. So thankfully I did not do that this time to teach you one of those lessons of showing you where I screwed something up. So after I got all the pieces glued up, I let them sit for a little while and then came back with a card scraper and got the excess glue squeeze out, scraped off on each of them. So this is my preferred way to do it. You could do it straight with sandpaper without going to the card scraper at all, but I just feel like my sandpaper lasts longer if I use card scrapers. I have a few different types which work well. This has a curved seat, so I use the curved style. And then, sorry for the jumpiness of a, a new cameraman who's kind of 
kind of all over the place helping me out here with the shop supervisor. So we went through with 80 grit first, which got rid of all the red residue that was left over from that cushion, all the grime, and then went up to 220 grit. So here I thought I could use my lathe to help turn, but you can see it's not a good idea. It wasn't secure, and I ended up almost throwing it out. So just used the lathe more than anything just to hold it straight, and I could sand these round pieces. So that's me turning it by hand. I did not have the lathe, lathe turned on as I sanded these and then wiped them off with mineral spirits like every other piece. So the arms were the only pieces I was able to do that. And then here, I just got a drill bit solely to knock out the extra glue residue from the past. So I'm not trying to do anything about making the holes bigger. It's purely just using a bit to kind of go around and any glue that had hardened up in there, just knocking it out. Once I did that, just put glue in the holes of each one, so that way when it was turned upside down, the gravity of the glue would hopefully resid come down the top. And I'm not going to show it to you later, but that little bit of glue that I just dropped on that one spindle, actually I forgot to sand that bit. So I can notice it, you'd have to really look for it to see it, but whenever you do a project, you tend to notice any kind of mistakes that you make. But anyway. This part is going to take a little bit longer on the video. I didn't want to do the time lapse too fast forward because with the new cameraman, you guys would get a little nauseous with all the jumpiness from not having a fixed mounted camera but being handheld here. But thank you to the cameraman. I'm not knocking it. Appreciate the help. And I do really like this blue silicone mat and that blue silicone brush because any glue that falls off of that it'll peel off really easily after the fact. So here just a light tap was used with the uh, rubber mallet and then any squeeze out I did my best to minimize how much of it was left around. So I really recommend if you do this to take some sandpaper after this glue squeeze out dries and make sure that you sand it a little bit more. Because I, I did do that, but I don't feel like I did it enough. And at the end, I noticed a tiny bit of discoloration when I put the linseed oil in there. So once it was there, we've got three clamps on each side. And don't line it up here where that large armrest spindle that goes through actually screwed up that vise and, or that clamp and actually came back and moved it. But if you mess up like I did right here where you can see it, where it goes through the bottom of the seat, I actually had my clamp there so when I'm squeezing it, it's not helping because it's trying to push that spindle right back up through the top. So I did end up moving it after footage here. Again, the extended play version. Well, I ran into the problem. So uh, I was trying to get the base. And here I'm trying and to explain, I thought together, I recorded the audio, but I guess I didn't. Clamp. I had the going clamps going the all the way to the bottom where the rockers are, up to the arms, I and I was squeezing hard to make sure I had as much pressure as possible when I did. The seat so actually I've got it. just came unglued. Not the parts I glued, but the piece, pieces that I did not separate originally that you saw in the video. Those pieces did come undone on their own, so not happy with myself. there's a quick... Quick fix, just more just glue, extra and work I created for then once that glue dried, that. back to the scar <laughs> card scraper, back to the sander, a long time and doing it. So that did happen to me twice. More so to I guess lesson learned next time, really, really separate the pieces. Mm -hmm. So here you can see some of the images of what it looks like when I've got it sitting upside down with the clamps on it. And just to give you an idea of this sacrificial board here, it's purely used so that way I'm creating more even pressure versus one board getting broken out of the seat like it could have done. And then here are my clamps. I guess I should have taken mineral spirits to the rubber parts of my clamps because each of them apparently had some oil that it transferred into the bare wood. That's kind of a bummer and they didn't, they don't seem to be showing through the oil now that I put that on here. But in this step what I'm doing is just taking just a dollar store ketchup bottle and I filled it up with boiled linseed oil and then just liberally applied that to 
every part of this. So the good news, my hands get really dry this time of year, so the boiled linseed oil actually works to help my cracked knuckles a little bit. So if you guys can feel free, obviously, as any other video, skip ahead as you want, but I kind of like watching the time lapse of the bare wood, and then you see the contrast once you put the oil on there. You can kind of see just the way it starts to take shape for you. You can see the colors and a little bit of the grain starts to pop. So I did end up doing two thick liberal coats of this oil. I would I put it on there, let it all sit for a good 10-15 minutes and then wiped off the excess and then came back about 20 minutes later and did the same thing again and after that sat for a good 10-15 minutes, wiped it off. But any parts where you have two pieces coming together like the arms to the tall spindles in the top. I certainly made sure I put some in there because those pieces get really, really dry, especially if you leave it on the front porch for years. So, Again, sorry Miss Rogers, I <laughs> should not have had this left outside, so sorry about that. But No harm done at this point. So anyway, keep the oil going in any of the cracks. This kind of gives you a little shot of what it's going to look like. Actually, this is out of order, so that's what the furniture wax looks like before I wipe it off. So That furniture wax, after a good hour, go back with a clean cloth and just wipe off all that residual that's sitting left over. So again, I'm not one to spend a whole lot of time on editing, so just bear with me and pretend that I put the oil on before I wipe the oil off or the wax here. So anyway, call that a amateur photographer and video editor. So just hop in the DeLorean and go back in time and pretend that I did this step before the last step you guys just saw. But nonetheless, you should be able to get a good takeaway from it. So here we go. This is the before, which again, it was a sad sight. Just barely hanging on and screaming at me for neglecting it for all those years. I mean, just spots galore, water damage, all kinds of stuff. So, after a few days of tender love and care, this is what you get. So, most of the big blotches came out, which is nice, and then I can hide a little bit with the cushion later if needed, but I really like the linseed oil finish, a couple of coats of that, and then putting a furniture wax on top to seal in that oil and prevent it from drying out as quickly. So it's a good idea to go back every so often and repeat that process once you have these things finished. But overall, not too shabby. Here's a little bit of a close-up shot and then one final shot. <laughs> 